I am uh, saddened and heartbroken today. My uh, good friend, best friend, lifetime friend, really, in a way, uh, Stan died two days ago, March 9th, 2020. And uh, we were college buddies. And we met at the University of Oklahoma in Norman. We were both in our early mid 20s. And um, I think it had to have been about 1976. So that'd be 44 years ago. And uh, we, I was at a, I was on campus corner at a bar, a college kids bar, and I was some friends and on a weekend night and uh, a friend, one of my friends was talking to one of his friends and said, hey, there's going to be a party after the bar closed over at this guy's house. And uh, so we went over there and it was, turned out to be Stan's place and it was a duplex. And uh, he was a little older. He, he died, uh, he was 67 when he died two days ago. And uh, he was just a little bit older than me. I'm 65. And uh, he had come back from the Air Force. And he had originally gone to OU out of high school on an Exxon engineering scholarship. And then because of the um, Vietnam War, had joined the Air Force, uh, as many did. The Air Force, they would join the Air Force and Navy to avoid the Army and end up in ground combat in Vietnam. And... Uh, he came back on the GI Bill, and he lived in that duplex. And um, he was a little ahead of me in total hours in school. And, but anyway, I, I always remember that night uh, when I first time I met him. He, uh, we went in the back, and there was a lot of kids there. And we went in the back, me and him and some other guys. And he had a weight bench. It was like an enclosed porch. And uh, he went through his weightlifting routine with us, and what he did. And he was in good shape. He was uh, very muscular. And he was, he was rather short and stocky, which you can really build up, you know, uh, body build. And uh, so he shows his workout. And we, frankly, stood around there and drank beer and talked about it. So then just within a week or two after that, I was at the Gray Fox Inn, and, uh, which was... Uh, out, kind of out by itself and uh, I was there with my girlfriend and uh, we went in there and it was dark and everything and I got some quarters or something for the pool table and then I, well, by the time kind of acclimated life and I looked up there and Stan was sitting down on a bar was sitting on a bar stool at the end of the bar at our, our inn and I'll never forget he was, <laughs> he was wearing sunglasses holding a cue stick and spinning around in the on the bar stool and every time he'd come around, he would he had, had his big grin and was smiling at us. And uh, me and my girlfriend uh, always remember that and laughed about it, you know. He looked like the, what is it, the Cheshire cat. You could see his big smile on his teeth. And anyway, we got talking, and that's when we really became friends was that, that time. And we started visiting each other, you know, in our apartments and rent houses as we progressed through college and we talk about accounting and philosophy and religion and business and uh, all the professors in the, the business school and Adams Hall where we were going to where the business school was and different ones we knew in uh, school there and uh, we were both accounting majors and what's interesting to me was I, I had no business background or exposure to it. My uh, Mom was a housewife, and my dad was uh, traveled overseas in the uh, oil fields as a tool pusher. And there just wasn't any business people around me. And, uh, and so I, I really, even though I was a county major, didn't have a lot of exposure to it. And I certainly didn't know much about accounting as far as what you did when you, uh, as, a, as an accountant or something. And uh, anyway, I ended up as an auditor and trained auditors, and that was really my career. But he knew all about public accounting told me all about it, and that's why I went into public accounting was because of what Stan told me. He knew all about it, and I never, I don't know how he knew all that, but 
he uh, he convinced me to go into it, and he was planning on it. So anyway, we took one class together, a finance class, and then we took an accounting class at the same time, but we were in different sections, and we um, studied together though, and had the same textbook, and worked the problems in each chapter together. So then. Um, I, Stan got married and had kids, and I passed him in total hours and, and graduated before he did. And so I went into public accounting, and uh, uh, it, gosh, it had to be a couple of years later. Uh, I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, he, was fin he finished up at Norman, and I got him his first job, which was in public accounting. Then he went to the Bank of Oklahoma in trust taxation and accounting, and then he went to... Uh, I think it was called NCNB, which is a huge bank. Um, became I think it became the largest bank in the United States. And he was in their Dallas office downtown. And they had previously been the Republic Bank of Texas, which was this gigantic, rich, prosperous oil bank in Dallas. And uh, then later it became the Bank of America. NCNB acquired Bank of America and then changed their name to theirs because they were, it was a, such a famous name. And he retired from Bank of America, and frankly, poor health, and and uh, boy, he struggled and su suffered for several years, and with uh, uh, just all sorts of medical problems before he died. And um, but we kept in touch with each other, and um, we used to, actually when he was in Tulsa, we you know we'd still go by and see each other and hang out together, and uh, he. Uh, was just so genuine. I just can't repeat enough. I've thought a lot about it, how genuine he was. I've thought a lot about Stan in the last two days, and, and that, that's what I really, how do you describe Stan? And it was, he was genuine. He was unpretentious, unassuming. Uh, he was what I call achingly honest. He was just this special soul, this special spirit, and uh, he wasn't trying to impress anybody. He was just Stan, and uh, he was very intelligent. Uh, he was very imaginative, crea imaginative, creative, and uh, uh, very entertaining to talk to. He always had new ideas. Of what he'd been thinking about, and um, so he was very honest. And uh, another thing I was saying, he was incredibly positive he was always cheerful and happy and um, and I just you know he was always the same Stan was always happy he was always genuine and um, you know it was just like he was slow to anger also he uh, another quality I never really saw Stan mad uh, and he never really said anything bad about anybody uh, once in a while he'd get frustrated with someone but he you know he didn't really say much bad about him. He just expressed his frustration. But, you know, he was just, uh, again, an incredible soul, an incredible spirit. And, uh, you know, he was just at a, uh, he operated a higher level than me, that's for sure. And, uh, um, and uh, I was honored to, to know him and uh, that he would be my friend. That's what it came down to, I think. And, um, we had such wonderful times together. Um, Stan grew up, his dad took him deer hunting growing up, so he liked the outdoors, as do I, obviously, standing here in the woods. And um, um, we, the first spring break that came along while we were at OU, we decided to go to southeast Oklahoma to the hills and mountains, and he grew up down there. And uh, so his dad had a four-wheel drive pickup, Ford pickup, and Boy, four-wheel drives back in the 70s were hard to come by, and this was a real prize for us. And so we took that four-wheel drive pickup and went up into the hills and mountains and wilderness areas of uh, Oklahoma. And back then, the McCurtain County wilderness area was completely open. And so we off we went off into there, and uh, we took his son, Charles. He got Charles was six, seven, eight years old, He's, and we took my girlfriend. All four of us went up there to spend spring break and camp out. And, and uh, so we, I remember 
one particular instance we were going up a mountain road which was a bulldozed road that curved around the side of the mountain and was working its way up it was very narrow and we were we came around go working our way up there in that four-wheel drive pickup and i was driving and uh it stopped it just that was it the road stopped the bulldozer had stopped at that point i don't know why and it was just no trees and a sheer drop off on the downhill side and the uphill side was a wall you know, rock and dirt. So I had to back that pickup down the road, and it was very narrow, so I thought, well, all I can do is just try to keep it as close to that wall on my side as I can, you know, and not hit, without hitting them side mirrors and, uh, you know, hitting the wall itself. So with the truck, and then Stan was on the other side and uh, was looking out the door and uh, the window, and then I think he opened the door at times, and just I slowly backed down out of there another time this that was in the 70s in the 80s and I think it's the last time we went out anywhere together in the woods um, we <laughs> the same thing same area basically and we went up and as we were going but we got out late we went and got his dad's Ford pickup again and it was late and it getting dark by the time we got out in the wilderness and we we're looking for a place to camp and uh I saw a road that went up the mountain or up the side of this hill and basically went it straight up it but it wasn't real steep so I said well let's go up there and try that we'll get up on the side of this hill and um, or get up there and maybe we find a cool camping spot it was dark though so I drove up that and we got up to the end of this road and it was uh, grown over uh, with you know branches and stuff and so I busted through that, and all of a sudden I hopped, popped up out of that, and I was sitting on a uh, perpendicular on a bulldozer road. And uh, and there was, uh, so I, I remember I turned right and went down it, and on the downhill side it was just a solid wall of trees, and on the uphill side it was the same as before, you know, the rocks and dirt. And... Uh, so we drove around on that and went cur curved around as the road went along and all of a sudden it ends. Same thing again. So the bulldozer just stopped at that point. So it was wide though and I was able to turn around and went back and went the other way. Well, same thing happened. Hit a dead end. And so I said, so, well, I don't really want, you know, we talked about it. I really don't want to camp up here on this road. So let's go back down. There were some cool places by streams and things we'd seen. We'll just go back down there for the night, you know start tomorrow and find some cool nice places and so we started driving along on the trees the tree line which was on the downhill side looking for how we got up there well it was dark and you could not tell from the headlights and i remember Stan had a flashlight we couldn't find where we broke through so we went back and forth you know like three times and i stopped and so i remember Stan said so this we both had accounting finance type jobs and uh, he says, so this is how we reduce the stress we have in our profession and our jobs is we come up here, <laughs> get on this mountain at night and get lost in a four-wheeling four and this is what we do to escape. And uh, and we, we sat there and laughed about that. Um, ultimately, we did find the way down and um, went on with our camping and walking and hiking trip. But I always remember those two times in particular and uh and you know going out in the woods with stan if it was you know the times that we did and on spring break and then later on this was several years later when we went out that last and i'm pretty sure it's the last time we ever went went out in the woods together But to remember Stan as, um, again, he was genuine. He was achingly honest. You know, and uh, boy, it's just hard to find people like that. And um, I was so fortunate to know him. He was, you know, like I said, slow to anger. He had a positive attitude. And uh, he was just one of a kind. Uh, I, I've, I've just rarely, rarely met someone with such wonderful qualities he was a just a special spirit a special soul and uh, 
I I see it as uh, you know Stan's spirit his consciousness came to this earth and lived a life here and uh, uh, he's one of those people I you know I think he, he accomplished what he was trying to do and uh, he was um, you know it, it wasn't about materialism or gain or you know status prestige uh, it was about maintaining his uh, his high spiritual standards is what I consider it and uh, you know a higher higher standards than uh, this world bombard you with which are low standards and uh, and he, he you know he, I remember one time uh, in the last few years he said he had a rare bout of depression but my gosh what all he went through you know he, uh, his health problems I, he, it just amazed me and uh, I felt so bad when he died because he uh, he, want, he wanted to stay alive and uh, it was because of his grandsons two of them in particular that um, lived nearby and he was so proud of and uh, that's what drove him that was his purpose and to help them and uh, he was so proud of them and uh, I knew that even at the end he was fighting to stay alive and it was for that reason but uh, he you know it just wasn't meant to be his time was up and uh, but his spirit I think accomplished what in this life what his spirit came to do, you know, and uh, he, uh, he's one of those people, you know, you can honestly say, you know, if there were more people like Stan, it'd be a better world, there's no doubt in my mind, so Stan's spirit is left now, and I'm just so heartbroken, I have tears in my eyes saying this, and uh, Stan, I'll never forget you, and fare thee well, my old friend.